Hello, everyone. Welcome to Veterans of the Cedar Valley. My name is Roy Justice, and I'll be your host for this program, this special program. Your regular host, Tom Haggerty, has been attempting during the last few shows, if you've been watching, to feature veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And they've been talking about their experiences. Today, something a little different and a slightly younger panel. We welcome five seniors who are students at uh, Waterloo Columbus High. These students, along with others and their teacher, Gary Schneiders, as, and their chaperones, has returned recently from a trip to France. Not an ordinary kind of trip, however. It included battle sites, a whole lot of history that would really be kind of hard to teach if you just used a textbook. This trip to France has been done actually over the past several years, and right now we're going to spend a little time getting up close and personal, a first-hand impression, if you will, from those who made this a journey, a journey of a lifetime. Let's say welcome to five of our panelists. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's begin, actually, with something pretty easy, maybe the easiest question of the day, and that is your names, please. Grace, I'm going to start with you. So, I'm Grace Serma. Ethan Schmitz. Colin Schmitz. Adrian Cole. Andrew Luke. Don't fight over who's going to be next. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you a, uh, a discussion for the next several minutes about what this trip was all about. Um, first of all, Grace, I'm going to start with you. Give us a little bit of a synopsis, if you will, of why you and these other students took this trip. So, um, ever since freshman year, I think when we were all in world history with Mr. Schneiders, um, we would see videos of previous classes and classes going over to Europe um, to experience the battlefield. So, I think it was all um, our goal to eventually get to where they were and to go and experience the battlefields and remember what the men did for us um, years ago. Okay, uh, I've noticed that you all happen to be wearing the same t-shirt. I'm going to ask, um, Ethan, you want to stand up and, and model that for us? Just a second. Turn around. See what this shirt says. I, let's see, it says, tell me what it says. To honor, to experience, and to remember, to learn and to remember. Okay, and that means what to you? Well, the whole point of our trip was to get a better understanding of the sacrifice that those soldiers made for us in World War I and World War II. And I think that everything on the t-shirt just epitomizes what we were there for. Okay, we're gonna come back to some of that in just a minute. Uh, Colin, tell the viewers not only where you went, uh, but why were those particular locations chosen? We went to France and Belgium, and we focused a lot on World War I so a lot of that was taking place in Belgium, which many people don't actually know. So we went there and went to a lot of important places like Vaquez and just all the battlefields that we could get to in the time we had. We could have easily stayed longer than the days we stayed, but we only had so much time. And then we, in France, we went to Normandy. Mm -hmm. So. We, we went there for obvious reasons because that was World War II was that was where the biggest sure. battles were at. Okay, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get there in, in a minute. But before we get there, in fact, even before we get to France, let's back up just a minute because this all started with being prepared for this trip, and there was a lot of preparation that went into that even before the trip. So, um, Adrian, what came first? Um, throughout the school year, we would have class discussions and we'd have videos that we would go over and we'd also read quite a few books to try to prepare us to get in the mindset of what we would be seeing but once you actually went to those battlefields and cemeteries it was nothing like what you would have read it's just like you have to be there to actually understand what had happened um, Andrew some of the research that you uh, that you got into and and read where did you find this material it was in all of the books that we had read or the videos that we had uh, watched before we had went over. Uh, Mr. Schneiders loves uh, Barbara Tuckman and the Guns of August, so that was a, a read that we had to have bef to complete the class as well. Uh, but we also read The Longest Day, which had to deal mm -hmm. with the 
um, D-Day as a full, like the invasion and mm -hmm. all three stages of that, and then uh, the Price of Glory, which was over Verdun, and how that fortress city came to be and where it was, and then also uh, Storm in Flanders, which was about Ypres and all of the battles and the importance of Ypres. So you weren't necessarily doing this all individually, but you had kind of a group study? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that come about? Was that the assignment? Or did you just do it all on your own? No, um, in class we would, oftentimes we would read the book, we would take a test over it to make sure that we, get, we got our reading done and we fully understood why we were reading the book. And then we would, we would then discuss it in class. We would take probably, sometimes we would take about like a week and we would just discuss like every bit of the book, what it meant to us, and just why we were going to be going to these places. Okay. okay. How long a time are we talking about, Ethan? How long was the travel time that you were gone? Uh, we spent a lot of time on buses and Oh, we were there on our whole trip was about 12 days. Okay. But we spent five hours on a bus to get to Chicago, to get to the airport, and then another nine hours on an airplane. And then once we got to Europe, we spent about, I think it was four more hours in a bus to get to where we were staying for the night. So we spent a lot of time sitting down and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, most, of, most of the time we wanted to go to sleep, but... With Mr. Schneider, you're always learning. There's always something to do. So he'd have videos during the bus rides that were in correlation with the places we were going. Okay, now you mentioned uh, earlier, one of you said something about the class that you took. What class was this? Uh, the class that we took is, we call it AP Euro, and it stands for Advanced European History. So we had to uh, apply to be in the class. We had to write a paper basically saying, what history meant to us and why we should be able to be in the class. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a lot of hard work that went into getting in the class and then staying in the class and making it on the trip. This was not a, uh, this was not a vacation trip. This was not a no. free <laughs> not vacation trip. There no. was some cost involved. Adrian, what kind of cost were we talking about here? Um, the cost was about like $2,000, but um, I'd say it's one of the most well-spent money I've ever used. So um, some of the requirements for the class was basically like a 20 page research essay. Every Hello. single one of us had to do. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, one of those. Um, we had to choose our topic for it. So it wasn't as awful as you would mm -hmm. it seem. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, a little review of some of the sites and we're going to see some of the sites. But uh, let, let's start in chronological order with the sites from World War I. Uh, so we visited the Meuse Argonne Cemetery and the Somme Cemeteries, which are American cemeteries, uh, not really visited by Americans since it is overseas and in France. Um, I had the ability and the honor to say the exhortation at one of our wreath laying ceremonies at mm. the Meuse Argonne, mm -hmm. and it was just a powerful feeling knowing that, uh, yeah, the Meuse Argonne, that was it right there, and it's just a powerful feeling knowing um, that you're one of the only people that are there actually supporting them. And then uh, went to Verdun, which is a fort city uh, as a tactical use for the French in World War I. Um, and then Les Asparges, which was the first place that we had went uh, after we had gotten off the plane in our four hour bus ride. Grace, back to you for a second as we're watching this. Uh, recall for us, if you can, and it's probably still vivid in your mind, uh, what these particular sites were known for. Um, these were just a lot of the trenches and battlefields of where the men fought. So, I mean, they look, it looks like a, just a bunch of land with a bunch of hills, but really each hole is where a shell hit, where a possible man could have died. Um, the huge holes are, shell, are sapping, sapping holes. Um, basically, sapping holes were a lot larger than shell holes because they would mine underground and explode the earth from underneath you. Mm -hmm. um, so those were, I mean, you can't, I can't come back and tell you how big those were. It's, you have to go and experience it. Um, but yeah, it was just walking around in trenches and shell holes of what were made because of the war. Okay. Now we have five of you here.
How many total were on the trip as far as students are concerned? There was uh, 22, 20, I think. Yeah. 20. Okay. And the traveling party, including chaperones and parents and I think we were about 30, 30, 35, 35, I think, 35, I think 35, yeah. 36. All right. Um, just to make you aware, all the students were pre-warned, if you will, about what some of these questions may be, thanks to Tom. <laughs> um, uh, Ethan, you knew that um, you were going to be probably called on to uh, describe a couple of these sites, yep. and we've already heard some of that. So it's your turn. Describe some more of these sites. Um, I'd say that one of the most memorable was the Muse Argon, and I say that because there's linden, linden trees that all, all around the graves, mm -hmm. and here in Iowa we don't have trees like that. You can see them in the background there, but they did, at this time they didn't have any leaves or anything, but uh, what they told us is they flower eventually and they look really beautiful. Um, another place would be Omaha or the cemetery and what was so amazing about that was it's just massive the cemetery in Normandy I mean mm -hmm. uh, there's walkways grass everywhere and there's even at some of the more famous graves you could see where people had walked so they had roped off because so many people had come to see their graves where at the difference between the Normandy Cemetery and Meuse Argonne you didn't see any of those walk, walking marks or anything because we didn't see a single person there. Mm. No one visits some of these places and that's, it's just really sad to think about these men that gave up their lives and yet no one, no one remembers. We've uh, gone, if you will, from the World War I sites to World War II. Uh, name some of these other sites that, in World War II that you were visiting. Uh, in World, the World War II sites that we looked at uh, we went to Normandy, like was mentioned, uh, Omaha Beach, mm -hmm. Gold Beach, and St. Mary Gleese. We went to St. Mary Gleese because that is where s some of the first para paratroopers landed accidentally. They weren't obviously supposed to land on a, on a village. And uh, when some of them land on the village, some of them got stuck in like the buildings. So there, if you go there today, you can still see a paratrooper, a dummy of the paratrooper. Mm -hmm hanging from the steeple of the church because during uh, D-Day, somebody actually did, did catch their parachute on that steeple. Ah. Um, let's go to uh, the upper deck, if you will. Uh, Adrian and Andrew, chime in here about um, what these sites that were just mentioned were known for during World War II. Well, uh, the Normandy Cemetery is probably the most powerful Thing that I have experienced. Um, it's the amount of people that were there and relativity to how quiet it was, was amazing. Mm -hmm. There was hundreds of people there and you could hear a pin drop on the sidewalk. Uh, they knew it was sacred place. They knew what, like they, they knew what had happened here. So it was really powerful seeing all of those people and how quiet it was. Adrian? Um, for Normandy Beach, um, it's just hard to describe how a battle had went on at such like a peaceful place. Like you're hearing the waves crash upon like the sand and you do, and you just think like men had sacrificed their lives here. Like it's, a, yeah. Like we, we also put down like these rocks in the USA form so we could honor them. Like you see right there. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. The uh, lessons learned along the way on this particular trip, and we're not ready to wrap up yet, and I'll come back to this particular subject, but just what top of the mind comes up if you had to describe to, uh, to someone like me, what kind of lessons did you take from this trip? I think that there's two words that really resonate with me, and as an, a 76-year-old woman told me at the Normandy Cemetery, she said, never forget. I think it's just also, um, yeah, like never forget. Always remember that there, those men gave up their lives and their futures so that we can live ours. So just really being grateful for the life that we have today because they weren't able to live one like we are. During this uh, 
walk around. It wasn't all a walk around. Somebody said you grabbed some bikes and had a chance to do a little pedaling around. Who wants to tell me about that? Um, we ended up taking, a, it was like 22 miles we biked. It was a, we took a whole day where we were go driving, not driving, we were riding through the countryside in, <clears throat> around Belgium and into France. And we were stopping at cemeteries. Uh, we had a tour guide, his name was Carl. And what, how we met him is Mr. Schneiders took the first class down to Europe or over to Europe, mm -hmm. and they were staying in ho his hotel, and Carl offered to take them on a bike ride. And so now, 11 or 12 years later, here we are still doing the same bike ride. Right. Well, he takes, uh, takes us to different places than they went to. He tries to find a new place every year that Mr. Sneeders hasn't seen. Okay. So it's a really great experience. A little cold, but it, rain it only rained one time, so it was a, it was a, overall it was a good bike ride. Well, the students don't need a break, but after a 22-mile bike ride, I would. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity at our uh, particular point to uh, take a break as I catch my breath. We'll be back right after this. From the world wars to Korea, Vietnam, to the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan, and Iraq, they saw what few others ever saw. But many veterans don't talk about their experiences. It may be because you've never asked. Learn what you can't always find in the history books. Interview a U.S. veteran in your community and submit their audio or video interview to the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. Or share their stories by contributing their original photos, letters, or military documents. Participate so that future generations may hear directly from those who served and better understand the realities of war. Download a field kit from our website and find out how you can play a role in preserving history. Welcome back. Today on Veterans of the Cedar Valley, we do have veterans. Uh, they happen to be veterans of a great trip. Um, we've been visiting with five seniors from Columbus High School who took a trip to France, not an ordinary trip by any means. Um, they were there to visit areas where U.S. soldiers and others fought. Some did not return. I'm going to ask each of the students the same question, and they know what's coming. What do you remember most about this trip? Um, what I remember most is probably Point du Hoc. And I remember that the most because now, nowadays it looks so beautiful when you look out over the ocean. And it's hard to imagine that there was 5,000 ships in that ocean and that so many people died trying to make it up those cliffs. So it's so beautiful and tragic that it's just something I'll never forget. Uh, what I most remember was when I was at the Normandy Cemetery, there was a woman that came up to me and the first thing she said to me was, never forget. And then she went into a story, it was a French woman, she went into a story about how she had to be moved from her home in France off to a farm with her mother when the war came. And she said she can remember the first time that she saw an American soldier. They were she saw paratroopers coming down and she knew right at that point that everything was going to be okay and that was just really moving to hear a story from someone that was there that really appreciated everything that the soldiers did for us for them Grace? Um, for me it was also at the Normandy Cemetery uh, earlier that morning we filled Ziploc baggies with sand from the beach and we hiked up the hill to the cemetery, and um, when we were laying our Columbus flags in front of the Iowa uh, cemeteries, 
We also took the sand out of our bags and we spread it across their names on their gravestone and that really made their name pop and I felt like it was such an honor to rub the sand that they fought and died on on their names of their graves. Um, it was just such a very powerful moment that I don't think I'll ever forget. Mm. Adrian. Um, I'd say the men and gate ceremony. Um, it's just weird to think that like every night they honor and they have this ceremony at 8 p.m. every night and how some of the people go every night to remember the lost soldiers that the monument is made for. And we got the opportunity to see bagpipers and we got the opportunity to see probably over 100 veterans who had followed the bagpipers. And also we got to see um, like a little boy choir that we're able to sing and we also did like a last post ceremony there which was really a touching experience. Hmm. Andy? Uh, I'll remember the soccer ball monument the most. Uh, what most people may not know, but in 1914, there was a Christmas truce. Um, on Christmas, the French and the Germans came out of their trenches and they, they were all stopping. They realized that they didn't want to fight anymore. And uh, so they realize that, hey, these people aren't as different as I am. They're going through the same things that we are. They don't want to be here either. Um, so then they just started having fun. They had a soccer match. They were, they were getting shade. They were uh, trimming their beards. They were doing all sorts of stuff. They were trading items between Germans mm -hmm. and French. And uh, it was just something I, I'll never forget just because of how uh, like important it was to 1914. A tour of a bomb crater or a bomb shelter, that's got to be pretty awesome. Describe for me what, what you picture now as you're thinking back on those moments. Lots of concrete. It, was really, it, it wasn't really dark in there, but because they, they lit most of them up because of all the tourism coming. But there's cement everywhere, and I can't imagine being in a place with shells hitting above me for hours and hours on end. And we think they didn't have the technology that we do today to help make, um, I mean, we don't necessarily make forts, but buildings. And so how they went about making several forts and bomb shelters with the equipment that they had back then, um, it was just amazing to see how large and how high tech they were. Anyone else? Uh, I would like in Fort Dumont, uh, Mr. Schneiders um, took us all inside and uh, gathered us around this big metal plate that he had and uh, told us a story. He was just like, they let me do this a couple years ago and doing all this. And they said that the soldiers would hear this every two seconds, which would be the time a bomb would hit or mm -hmm. a show would hit the top. Mm -hmm. And he dropped the metal plate down and it echoed through the entire fort and it was extremely loud. We've been... Uh reliving, if you will, some of the experiences these students have had there, but your project wasn't done until you were back here and had to complete the project. And that included uh, doing a, uh, a program uh, for the school and uh, to honor the veterans. To, somebody tell me about what that was all about. So uh, it's become a tradition that after each class comes back from Europe, they put on a what we call the Veterans Project, and it's to do everything that we did. We went on the trip for to, to remember and to honor the veterans for the, their service. So we have three of us speak, and then we have a guest speaker, often, oftentimes a veteran. Mm -hmm. And there's presentations in the back, like talking about what we saw on our trip, and we just do it because we want to make sure that to let them know that we remember their sacrifice that they made and what they did was important to us, even if people forget it. Anyone else? I think you said it good. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Passing the buck, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I alluded to this earlier, but I'd like to hear you recall now as we think back to those moments, and it hasn't been that long ago that this trip was accomplished, what it meant to you personally. What did you take from the trip? Um, to me, I have uh, some family members that have been in the Army and the military, and my grandpa was around during World War II in Poland. 
So to me, it was just, it was nice to see or shocking to see what my grandpa had to go through. Um, and just, it just felt like a great honor to thank them truly for what they did for us. And it was an honor to go and do that. Ethan? Like I said earlier, uh, never forget, they gave their lives so that, they sacrificed their lives so that we could live ours. And I'll never forget that what they did for us. How long? Um, pretty much the same thing. I'll, I'll never forget what they did for us. I learned that the memorials aren't just another memorial. That's what Mr. Schneers would say to us while we were on the trip. This isn't another memorial. And you don't really realize what that means until you're actually at the memorials and you hear the story behind the memorials. And the story is what makes the biggest change for you because it puts a reason for why that's there. And it's just something, you, it's hard to describe like what you feel when you hear the story and then realize like what this memorial means. Adrian, when you close your eyes, what comes back? Um, just how I learned what the real meaning of sacrifice is and how through looking at all the cemeteries and learning how if every person in one of those headstones had a story and it makes you think of how many families were suffering and how lucky we are to have the lives we have today. I mean, we are fortunate to be living here. And Andrew? Uh, I would say the the sapping holes that we had seen, and there was there was some that were thirty yards across and eighty feet deep. Like it's it's hard to explain. Like even if you walk up and show someone a picture, it it's extremely hard. Like they don't understand how big this crater was, even though they can see like in the picture it is a lot bigger in person. And there was one that we went to where um, the explosion was heard in London, and we were in France. So it just goes to show how big these uh, sapping holes were. Mm. I didn't have the opportunity to attend the Columbus program you were referring to, but I understand all of you who went on that trip uh, stood on the stage and made a two-word statement to the audience. Do you remember what that was? And all together they said? We remember. And that means what to you? It means that, like we've said a lot, we're not going to forget the sacrifice that all of our veterans make, both from the past and the veterans that we, veterans from more recent. It's just too many people forget their sacrifice. And because of this trip and because of the class, we will remember. Let me take this opportunity to express my thanks to you and all the other students who weren't able to crowd into our studio and be with us. You took the time out of your lives uh, to experience, to learn, to honor, and remember the sacrifices that were made by so many, many soldiers, many of whom did not come home. To those watching, we thank you for joining us for this special edition, Veterans of the Cedar Valley. I'm Roy Justice. <laughs>